Okay, so thanks again. Let's now proceed to the last talk of this session. Nanomedicine against malaria, use of polyamidoamine-based nanovectors for the targeted drug delivery to plasmodia. Professor Xavier Fernandez Busquets from Barcelona. Welcome. Thank you very much for allowing us to present our work here, which is, of course, a part of a research, but it's also part of a personal commitment to join together those two words which are highlighted in red nanomedicine and, and malaria, and to counter the perverse argument that uh, nanomedicine is expensive and therefore it cannot be applied to diseases, um, to neglect the diseases like, like uh, malaria. In my opinion, there are two ways to counter that argument. One is um, we don't have um, a saying in that because it should be uh, the public agencies, private companies and governments that uh, put their um, um, uh, arguments and, and do their job in that uh, nanomedicine, even if it's expensive, can be applied to uh, a disease from a developing country. But what we can do as researchers is uh, try for the moment to design nanomedicines which uh, are um, uh, the best nanomedicines possible, but uh, also the, the most cost-effective nanomedicines, and that's what I will try to explain to you today. As we have seen before, this is the, um, the malaria uh, cycle, life cycle, and because all these symptoms and, and pathologies of malaria come from the blood stage, uh, also all the therapeutics are directed to this uh, blood stage. Although this is the worst case scenario, because in a person with malaria, there are several hundred billions or even a trillion infected red blood cells, and then we are trying to target every single cell of this systemic infection, which is a very hard job. As it has been mentioned before, uh, a best target probably is or are some of the uh, stages in the mosquito. For instance, one of the stages, which is the oocyst. Uh, in every single mosquito, there are maybe two, three, four uh, oocysts. In theory, it's much easier to target those but here we have the problem that there are several trillions of mosquitoes that you have to, to reach. Anyway, this is the next um, in the pipeline of our group. Is, this is our next objective, to cure uh, an insect of malaria with the highest objective of curing humans. But because we still have to find a funding agency who believes in this uh, approach, I will concentrate on the red blood uh, uh, cell cycle. This is the way we do our experiments. This is our first prototype, which was an immunoliposome. And then with all our nanovectors, what we do is we have a co-culture of living uh, red blood cells. Most of them are healthy. And the ones with the DAPI staining are uh, the ones infected by plasmodium. And then on top of this uh, culture, we add our nanovectors. And the cells are alive, and you will see that the nanovectors in this case are loaded with quantum dots, which is the red fluorescence. And then we expect this uh, in vitro result to proceed later to in vivo tests, which is that our nanovectors target only the infected red blood cells, and not only that, but that they inject their, uh, in this case, fluorescent content into this cell and not into healthy cells. And this is the result uh, that we expect before proceeding further. This is when we see in the fluorescence microscope the result of that experiment. We always follow the, the label of the nuclei, which, te which tells us which cell is infected by plasmodium. In this case, I selected this field with only one cell to, to show you uh, the, how well it worked in this case. This is the only infected uh, red blood cell. This is our targeting antibody. I didn't mention that our liposomes have a targeting molecule, which is an antibody. And this is the fluorescence of the quantum dots inside the single cell, which means that we have been able to inject the liposomal contents into the cells. So this, is, uh, this was very good, but uh, unfortunately, this doesn't mean that when we have a, a good in vitro result, that we already have it. When we uh, load the liposomes, not with a fluorescent marker, but with an, an antimalarial drug, and the objective is to kill the parasite itself, 
then things become more, more difficult. This is a, an assay with uh, chloroquine, which actually it's a very good anti-malarial and it's very difficult to, to beat because it's, uh, it's a small, it has even um, um, transported in the red blood cell membrane, so it, it's a small nanovector in itself. But anyway, we could improve uh, chloroquine delivery already uh, just with an, uh, a liposome without any targeting antibody. But if you add a sufficient antibody, you eventually reach and an, an have 100% of parasitemia reduction, which is our objective. And also in vivo, the results are promising. This uh, because we target uh, Plasmodium falciparum, which is a human uh, parasite. When we want to do uh, the experiments in mice, we have to use immunosuppressed mice that are transfected with human blood. And also in this case, we are able to improve uh, very much the activity of, of chloroquine uh, itself, which is very good. But when we uh, are adding uh, the cost of, of all this uh, assay, we ended up with a figure which cannot be accepted. <laughs> we can eliminate uh, half of the parasitism in one liter of blood but at the cost of more than 50 euros. So we still believe that an immunoliposomal prototype is good and it can be useful in a scenario of malaria eradication when we have probably very few uh, patients and with highly resistant parasites and then we could maybe treat with highly toxic drugs those, those few uh, parasites. But for the moment, this is not practical. So we we looked in, uh, in the uh, constellation of available nanoparticles, and then um, in collaboration with a group from uh, Italy, we decided to try uh, uh, a type of polymeric uh, nanoparticles, which are much cheaper than uh, liposomes. Particularly, we uh, have been using polyamidomine-derived uh, nanoparticles. Polyamidomines are this type of polymers, and we started trying three of them. As you can see here, uh, they form uh, small nanoparticles of about 20, 30, 40 nanometers across. And the first interesting thing that we found is that some of those uh, polyamidomine nanoparticles, like ACMA1, have an intrinsic anti-malarial activity. So we decided to continue this way because we could have maybe a nanoparticle with uh, an anti-malarial activity in itself and that maybe if we can encapsulate anti-malarial drugs and place some targeting molecule, we could have a, like a synergistic effect. The next surprise came when we uh, were simply uh, trying those nanoparticles on our experiment that I mentioned before. Still without any targeting uh, antibody, as you can see here, the nanoparticles, especially AGMA1 and uh, ESA23, they are targeted to uh, the infected red blood cells. We still do not understand the mechanism, but as you can see here again, the healthy red blood cells don't get the nanoparticles, the polymers, and only the infected ones uh, get it. I have to say that in, in the red blood cell cycle, there are several stages through which the parasite goes, and the earlier uh, stage is called the ring stage, which is this one here. Uh, ring stages are not targeted, probably because the red blood cell at the ring stage is not that different from a normal red blood cell, and it doesn't express any of the uh, receptors that probably our polymers are, are targeting. And uh, uh, this was confirmed by uh, fluorescence uh, assisted cell sorting. And the good thing also is that, if you remember, I mentioned before that because we are targeting falciparum, when it comes to do in vivo testing, uh, it's complicated and we have to use a special uh, rodent model. In this case, the other good surprise, when we do the same experiment, we add the polymers, in this case, to infected blood uh, from uh, um, um, rodent uh, malaria parasite, like Plasmodium ueli, infecting uh, mouse blood. We can see that, again, we have a specific targeting and in this case, uh, we can indeed target also the ring stages, which are the earlier stages of the parasite in the blood cycle, which is a good thing because then you give more time to the drug uh, to act. What we don't know is 
if we would, uh, instead of doing the Plasmodium falciparum, the human parasite assay in vitro, if we do it in a human, if there we could also be targeting uh, the ring stages because something is wrong with the ring stages uh, in vitro. This we don't know. And the other interesting thing is that uh, these polymers, they uh, target the parasite itself. This is a group of parasites that just egress from the red blood cell. And as you can see, the polymers, uh, they are just beside the, the plasmodium DNA. And this led us to propose uh, that maybe this could be used as a type of uh, real uh, Trojan horse, maybe not only for delivering drugs to uh, plasmodium infected red blood cells, but also uh, those polymers could be used maybe in some transfection strategies, which uh, I understand uh, they are a big need in malaria research. And this is just to illustrate that those uh, polymers, they just go we don't understand yet the mechanism, but they go through all the membranes behind which the parasite is hiding, and they even cross the plasma membrane of the parasite, and they go uh, inside the uh, plasmodium. We can find a lot of, of the label in, inside the cell. And finally, in our, uh, we went here directly to the in vivo assays in mice, and here we can say that all the mice that have been treated with uh, a chloroquine encapsulated in these nanoparticles, they have survived beyond 30 days, so they cure completely. And with the usual uh, treatment with chloroquine, even at a dose higher than the one we have encapsulated, the mice were dying after 12 years, they were all dead. And uh, the estimated cost here, uh, taking into account that the polymer is cheap to produce, we have gone down to 40 cents of euro to obtain the same result that we uh, needed uh, 50 euros with the liposome. And then finally, there are these uh, interesting points of these polymers. They, they are cheap to produce. They can encapsulate drugs. It's not so obvious. They have anti activity per se, low on specific toxicity, high biodegradability. They target also without the need for any targeting molecule, the infected red blood cell and uh, they target different plasmodium species, which is a good thing because maybe we could also target all human uh, malarias, and they have cell penetration and targeting just until the parasite itself. And that's all I, I wanted to say. This is just a movie illustrating what, what, how we think it works, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for this most fascinating research. I congratulate you really. I have followed your work a little bit since a few years when you were starting with this highly expensive approach of having a monoclonal yeah. antibodies and uh, liposomes and you have really gone a, a long way towards a practical, uh, mm. practically applicable way to do that. I wish you all the best for the future. Are there questions? Yes? I have a question concerning the uh, targeting of the DNA in the erythrocytes. Is this unspecific as to DNA, any DNA, since erythrocytes don't have DNA? Or going further, if there is any anemia and there's a... Um, um, the, so, so will there be like um, erythrocyte, erythrocyte stem cells, will they be affected by treatment? Um. So, so far as we have seen, there is some, um, some targeting to the healthy red blood cell. The, the, the polymer binds to the periphery, but it does not enter. So we don't think there, there is no, no anemia or no effects on, on um, there is no hemolysis, for instance. And the DNA targeting, we have only so far, we have only seen that the polymer uh, co-localizes almost with, with uh, the parasite DNA. And actually in the beginning, because it's so, the fluorescence is so close, we even suspected that maybe we were having some kind of artifact where we were actually seeing the DAPI fluorescence in the green channel. But then uh, when we could see, for instance, that in the rings um, they were not targeted, then clearly the two fluorescence are separate. 
but uh, we did not make yet the experiment, although we are planning it, of binding DNA to the polymers and trying to transfect with this, uh, with this DNA the parasites. I don't know if, if that was your question. Maybe partly, but I mean, um, not that it induces anemia or severe. No. I just wanted to say, if you had anemia due to prior, um, um, how you say? <laughs> well, anyway, if, if if you have some sort of uh, um, pre-stage of erythrocytes, which still has DNA within, if there's no. any targeting of other of DNA of uh, precursors of erythrocytes, of its specific the DNA of the plasmodium? That's no, no, what's my question. No, because the red blood cells, once they enter the circulation, they don't have any DNA at all. It's an uh, anucleated cell, so it, that this is not... Uh, we, ca we can be safe about, about that, there is no problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is another question. This ability to penetrate membranes, could this be associated with hemolytic adverse events in the clinical setting? I, I don't think so, because uh, the plasmodium infected red blood cells, they have been described to, to have uh, new permeation pathways. And then uh, it seems quite clear that maybe we don't need to, to do a a very special targeting because any nanoparticle or many nanoparticles below 70 nanometers or 80 nanometers, they seem to, to be incorporated by infected red blood cells quite easily. Then I, I don't think, we have never observed, for instance, that uh, in our in vitro cultures or in, in the in vivo assays that we have done, we have never witnessed any uh, any bursting of the red blood cells just because our polymers enter them. They seem to be as happy as they were, but just with the polymer inside. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy the coffee. Thank you very much for your interest.